Hey everyone, welcome to Two Car Pros. My name is Ryan and today we are continuing with our How to LS Swap Something series with part 11, finishing up our transmission and finishing up our throttle pedal and cable. If you've left your transmission on the same spot and that's all hooked up and you're all good to go, you can go ahead and just skip on down to the throttle cable. You're probably going to need to know how to do that. Before we go any further, let's thank our amazing sponsor, Summit Racing. They have done an absolutely amazing job sending us all kinds of parts, being super supportive. They have the best parts, the best prices, uh, awesome customer service. They're the best sponsor I've ever worked with and make sure you buy all your speed parts from summitracing.com and all the links will be down below in the description. So today we finish up the transmission, you know, we put the drive shaft back in, there's a, a special gear we needed to put on in our uh, uh, circumstance. Usually you don't need to do that, usually you can just bolt your LS up to your old transmission and beam, mop, boom, you're ready to go. But I thought I'd cover it anyway because that is something we had to do. The second bit of the video, we are putting in our throttle cable. You're most likely going to have to do that unless you have an electronic throttle. If you have an electronic throttle, that'll be covered in uh, wiring the car and you just plug it in, you're good to go, it's really easy. But if you have a throttle cable, you're going to have to do what we're going to do. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. So with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into it. So now we can focus on finalizing the uh, little bits of our transmission. So what I have in front of you are some Summit Racing automatic transmissional flexible cooler lines. This, these are the five foot ones, link down below in the description sent over by our friends at Summit Racing. Now, if you have the stock transmission in the stock place of your vehicle, and your radiator's in its stock place, you could probably just run the stock cooler lines that the car came with if they're in good shape, or just buy the hard lines that are pre-bent, and you can just put them in, you're good to go. But if you have a custom application like us, you're gonna need something like this, and these can be bespoke to whatever transmission you are using, or radiator you're using, you're going to have to look that information up, and the associated fittings uh, come with ours, and this is for a turbo 350 into a uh, older GM style radiator, so we know this is going to work great for us. Secondarily, here is our transmission dipstick tube sent over by Summit Racing, and the link is down below in the description. This one's really neat. It's fancy, it's stainless steel, looks really cool. Again, if you have your stock one and you have your transmission in stock home, you can probably get away with just using the stock one and you're made in the shade. We don't have that luxury, so we're going to put in our custom one. It's nice and bendy, and we'll mount that on the firewall, and it'll look great. So let's jump into that. So then we can grab our transmission dip tube, and I'm going to put it up between the engine and firewall just for right now so it's a little easier for installation and then I can bring it over. I've already lubricated uh, the rubber fitting with some WD-40 or you can use ATF and we can just kind of force that into its place. <clears throat> Might take a little bit of persuasion <sighs> until it is fully seated. Okay all the way in. You can tell it's all the way in. It might be a little difficult to see on camera, but the rubber grommet is fully against the transmission pan or the top of the transmission pan. There's no gap or anything. You want to make sure that distance is correct. So now we can decide where we're going to put our mount for our uh, transmission dipstick tube. And it's decently long. It could go pretty much anywhere. Uh, ideally, you'd want it, you know, kind of away from the engine. Uh, especially away from headers or anything like that. Um, kind of right where our fuel pressure regulator is, but you know, I found this place on our cowl, or just below our cowl on our firewall that is going to work great. And that's really kind of the art and the um, personalization you really get to do when you're building your own car is you get to put it where you think is best. And that's why this is nice and bendy and customizable. I've already drilled the pilot holes. We can just go ahead and put our bracket on and send the tech screws in after that. Oh yeah, it looks awesome. Now we can grab our fill tube, our dip tube, there we go. Check that out, it looks great. And then we can grab the nut for that, put that on so it doesn't go anywhere on us. So now I'm gonna grab an adjustable wrench. Honestly, you could use two adjustable wrenches, but I only own one. And then I have an inch size wrench for the top and you're just gonna snug that down. Bring it down to touch. It doesn't need to be Hulk tight. You don't need to crush it. It'll be okay. And then because we're not filling the transmission just yet, I'm gonna go ahead and put the dips tube in there. And it kind of gives us a test of how well it goes down there because you don't want it to do too many bends and such. Oh yeah, check that out. <laughs> that looks great. 
cool. So on these older GM style transmission, they have a vacuum modulator and what that and what that does is detect engine vacuum changes and adjust shift points accordingly. All basically mechanical, it doesn't use electronics like on modern transmissions. So as a result, you have to run a vacuum line from your intake manifold to this vacuum modulator. And the one I have is already attached to the bottom of my intake manifold. And that's gonna look different on every application. So just any source of vacuum from the intake manifold is going to be acceptable. This is a 730 seconds line and we can just put that on. You don't need a hose clamp or anything because it is under vacuum. Alrighty, now we can focus on putting on our coolant lines for our transmission. So you can see our, our dipstick tube from earlier. Here are our ports. They might look different on your application, but the install process will be more or less the same. Now, if you have your stock lines, you can just put them on and you're made in the shade, but we don't. So we have this adapter that goes to whatever thread this is. It has a flare on it, so you don't need any kind of pipe tape or anything like that. And I think that adapts to uh, dash six, I believe, for our cooler lines, which are fine. And I'm just gonna put those on finger tight for right this moment. And we can just snug those bad boys up. Doesn't have to be Hulk tight, just snug, one arm tight's probably fine. And this is a three quarter inch deep well. Ah, that feels excellent. And now we can move on. So I have my right angle fitting that came with our kit. And you can always tell what a pipe thread is and if it needs tape, if it tapers in slightly. And uh, it does, so it needs tape. There's no flare or sealing surfaces, so it doesn't need that pipe tape on there three times round. And we're just gonna install that bad boy. And it is going to get snug pretty quick. So I'm gonna grab a 916th wrench and just keep turning it. So, uh, tightness with this is a little interesting. You are into aluminum threads. Uh, you can pull them out, but you don't want it to be loose either. And it needs to really be clocked in the right position. I want mine clocked perfectly over to the right. Um, I can tell just by looking at it, it doesn't have enough threads. So I'm just gonna do another 360 around and we should be right on the money. And that is just something you're gonna kinda of have to feel out. It's gonna be bespoke to your application. I'm, I'm sorry, I wish I had a more definitive answer for you. Oh yeah, I can feel it getting nice and snug. And honestly, I don't think I could get another 360 out of it without snapping something or pulling threads out. So what I'm gonna do is just get it to where I want it, which is right about there. And I'm gonna call that installed. So now we can attach our transmission cooler line. Again, this is our, our custom application, so it's gonna take a little bit of routing, but it is going to look like a million bucks when we're all done with it. This is a dash seven wrench. We're just gonna give that a nice snuggening. It doesn't have to be super tight. Oh yeah, that's real good. Yeah. There we go, nice and snug on that guy. So now we need to route our transmission cooler lines. Uh, you can see that we are missing our torque converter shield. Normally you would have a shield here. We don't have one. They're sort of optional, but you really should have one. And then uh, you're normally gonna have a starter right here as well, but we haven't wired our car up yet. So I need to have access to our crankshaft positioning sensor. So we're going to feed our transmission cooler lines away from where the exhaust is gonna run alongside the engine block. and to the front of the vehicle. So it's more or less, more or less look like this. That looks really, really good. And we can do the other, same for the other one, and then we can zip tie it in place. Yeah, that's looking pretty snazzy. We can run just like that, and we'll be made in the shade. So now we can hook up this side of our transmission cooler lines. And now it doesn't matter which one from the transmission comes up to where, just whichever makes the most sense to you, whichever you can route better. You just don't want any hard kinks anywhere. You want nice, sweeping, gradual turns. We'll just start that. <clears throat> we'll just snug that down. Again, doesn't need to be Hulk tight. Just snug like that is absolute perfection. Go ahead and do that for both fittings. Next thing on our project for today is we need to put our vehicle speed gear in, and that's what goes to this, which goes to our speedometer inside of the car. If you have a newer transmission, you have like a 4L60E or 4L80E, something like that, that will just have an electronic plugs and a couple over here on the side of the transmission thereabouts. We have an older car with an older transmission. 
So we're gonna need that. If you have the stock transmission for your vehicle, it probably already exists and you can just do this and hook it up and you are good to go. Ours doesn't have that, so we're gonna have to take a 916 socket to remove our transmission tail housing here. And sometimes they're on pretty st stuck, so you might wanna grab a little rubber mallet, just give it some taparoos side to side, and then it comes right off. Awesome. So I have our transmission parts uh, in front of me sent over by our friends at Summit Racing and what is in this box is the actual gear that interfaces with our speed cable. It's 39 teeth and I have the associated output shaft gear that will uh, fit with it. Now these two gears have a special relationship with each other. They have to be compatible and there's a couple different sizes so you really got to pay attention to that. Also the differentiation between the teeth on this and the teeth on this and how big each one is is going to change based off of a couple of factors and those factors include your rear end ratio and your tire height so you have to know that calculation and i could we could do a whole episode based off of uh, what you need for that i'm not going to go into it i'll leave a link down below in the description to tell you what gear you're going to need i did mine myself and we're going to be somewhere in the right ballpark it doesn't have to be you know down to the micron we're not building space shuttles here if it's within three or four miles an hour i call it good enough and the clip that's going to affix this blue gear to the output shaft of our transmission so let's get into it so rotate your output shaft until you see this nice little hole right there that is where our clip that little bit that sticks up on our clip is going to reside and we're going to have the hoop located towards the transmission like this and then as far as the gear goes, I notice it has a chamfered side and a straight side. We're gonna get the straight side to face towards the transmission. So we can load up our clip into our hoop like that. So that side should be looking at you and this side should be looking at the transmission. And we're just gonna install that. like that you can kind of just put it on by hand and then you might not be able to rotate it right here just because that locating pin is in the splines but once you get down to here we're gonna need a little bit of an implement to uh, kind of tap that into its place just line it up with that pin trying to get to uh, its home and you'll feel it it'll click and then it won't go any further so I'm just gonna take a long flat implement and just tap it on one side and tap it on the other. And we're just gonna keep making our way down. Oh, this is working great. Keep checking on it. I think we're good. I think we just need more. So there you go. That is what it should look like. The pin's nice in the hole and you can't really take this off or move it on the shaft or anything. So I think that's good. So in front of you, I have our tailhouse extension on our automatic transmission, in our case, Turbo 350. And uh, we're going to have to pop this plug out of there. Uh, this transmission was meant to run a different prov provision for the speed sensor, so or the speed cable in our case. Uh, we have the housing for that sent over by Summit Racing and the link down below in the description. And this is also tooth gear specific. So all three of these parts have to match each other and ours is conveniently all 39 and TCI makes that. And again, the link is down below in the description. You can see it has even has right there on the range, the housing 34 teeth to 39 teeth. Ours is 39, so we should be making the shape. So we're looking now is inside that tailhouse extension, and what you can see is the back of that freeze plug. It's just like a freeze plug, except you have the convenience of the access to the back of it. So what I'm gonna do is grab my punch, and I'm just gonna do my best to punch it on out of there. And there you go. So we can take our tailhouse extension. I've already lubricated the seal with some racing grease. You could use ATF as well. We're just gonna replace that exactly where we found it. Oh yeah. And when we're tightening this down, make sure to go in an X pattern as evenly as you can. And there you go. 
So I've got our brown gear. I've lubricated the teeth and the shaft. I'm going to insert it into our home. So it looks like that, and the little holding home piece. I've also lubricated that o-ring as well. Never ever put o-rings dry. And we can just insert that. Now the clock orientation of this is important. You want the two divots, I'm pointing to one of them right now, that guy, to be facing the rear of the car. So we can just kind of put that in its home a little bit and uh, yeah, we can kind of orientate it the way we need it to, uh, to corresponds with the fork that secures it in place. There we go, I can check the fork. I want the fork to line up with its bolt hole. And a little more. There we go, that looks pretty good. There we go. Oh yeah, that looks great. And if it's off, you can still rotate this just a little bit. You know, you don't, just don't wanna, you know, grip and rip on that guy. Okay, so we can put our, you know, kind of fork piece in its place. Get our bolt in there. Nice washer and lock, lock washer, why the heck not? Make sure, make sure that is in its home, which it is, and it looks great. Gonna grab a half inch wrench. And we're just gonna snug that down. I don't really have a torque spec for you, but you'll be able to feel it, I promise. Nearly there. Ah, like that. That felt really good. And so then we can take our Speedo cable and insert it into its home and thread it on. Haha, <laughs> that looks pretty good. Nice little tip I have for you is don't go crazy on this, but you can get a pair of channel locks, open up a little wide, and just give it a little snuggening, and that's perfect. So now we can reinstall our drive shaft. We're just gonna carefully feed it up through here. Now, normally you don't have this parking brake arrangement you have to worry about. So you can just kind of lift it up into its place. So now we can align our slip yoke with the splines on the transmission. It might take a little bit of kajigrin to get it just right. Oh, there we go. And we're gonna go ahead and slide that in. We can actually bottom it out like that, and now we can go to the pinion side. So I have aligned the pinion, uh, so it's nice and horizontal, along with our U-joint. And what I'm gonna do now is very carefully remove the tape, holding onto the caps with my fingers, and don't just yank this off willy-nilly. Be very deliberate and gentle. Hold onto those caps so they don't fly off. That'd be a real boomer. Now these caps, a lot of, thing, a lot of the time people get this wrong, this little indent here, this little tang that is just in front of my finger, the U-joint caps need to fit in between those on both sides. If it doesn't fit, either a needle bearing is rolled over and the cap's not sitting quite right, or you just plain Jane have the wrong U-joint. But I think ours is right on the money, so we can just hold the caps and slide it into its position, making sure that the cap on both sides is behind that tang. And that looks like a million freaking bucks. So we can put our U-bolts back on. Sometimes it takes a little bit of rotating to get those in their home. And I'm gonna put the lock washer back on. Hold by the nut. So I've put that U-bolt on. Now what I'm gonna do for you, the viewer, I'm gonna rotate over my drive shaft gingerly, just so it opens up so I can get this U-bolt on in the same position. And I haven't tightened the U-bolt on the other side as well, um, just because I want to do it as evenly as I can. You don't want to like crush one side and then the other, or you know, do, do it unevenly. So it's gonna be a teensy bit difficult to film for you, but long and the short of it, I'm going to just do it in an X pattern. So just imagine an X, you know, and follow along. And that you don't have to rotate for. You should be able to get a wrench in there. And mine is. A half inch, yours might be different. So what we're gonna do, start on this, give a couple turns, go over here, couple turns, and then back over. Couple turns, back down, couple turns, 
and we're just gonna keep going and we're just gonna keep going in an X pattern until it's nice and snug down. I don't have a torque spec for you. Don't think you get a torque wrench in there anyway. So just keep going around multiple times in an X pattern. Also, if the drive shaft is moving on you, you can put the transmission in park and it won't move on you anymore. All right, that was my fourth time around and it feels really, really good. So I think we're good to go on this guy. So I'm just gonna do a quick little walk around what our finished product looks like. And check that out. So that's about how much distance you should have on the transmission when it's in the air. There's no weight on the rear end right now. That is absolutely perfect. I am so pleased with how this turned out. Custom transmission installed. All it needs is transmission fluid and this thing's ready to go. So in front of you are all the pieces of what make a cable throttle works. If you have an electronically operated throttle, you don't have to worry about this because you can just plug it in and you're pretty much good to go. But RLS is a little bit on the older side. The I think it's the 24 Reluctor Wheel uh, LSs have a manual throttle, and some people just like the drive-by cable system, which this is going to be. We have our back bracketry sent over by Summit Racing. It's made by ICT Billet, link down below in the description. Our throttle cable that we've measured to be about maybe three feet long. On that one, you just really need to measure out how long you think it's going to be, and if you get it wrong, it's okay. Just send it back and get another one. It's not the end of the world if you have to do a couple of fit tests to get the cable length just right. And then inside of here is sent over by our friends at Summit Racing is our throttle pedal. This is like a universal mounted throttle pedal. And I'll show you exactly how this goes together in the car. And it has this arm that we're gonna attach our throttle cable to, and it is going to work amazingly. So let's get started by putting on our bracketry. So I've already pre-assembled our bracket here. Looks like a million dollars. And you can see that it comes with basically two ways to fasten this. I assume that the holes are for like a more standard setup, but the slots are really neat because it gives you that adjustability and the adjustability is what we're looking for. Um, Cause you know, it's a non-stock application, you know, it's a hot rod application. So it's gonna take a little bit of figuring where we want it. So I'm gonna leave those in those slots and I'm gonna put the fasteners on so it doesn't go anywhere, but I'm gonna leave it a little bit loose so that way I can adjust it later. Oh yeah, that looks pretty good. A little difficult to see, but. So I'm gonna put these nuts on here and we're just gonna, we're just gonna keep those loose. We're gonna keep them on so, you know, that they don't go anywhere on us or anything like that. But just finger tight like that is perfectly fine. And we'll tighten them down when we do the final adjustment with the throttle cable and all that. You'll see what I mean in just a moment. So we wanna keep those nice and adjustable and in their slot. If you had something uh, a little more stock, you could probably just get away with using the holes that came with it, but we don't, so. You know, a little bit trickier, but it'll be worth it. See how nice this slides? So that that's really gonna help us when we do the throttle cable. So now we can grab our throttle cable and the throttle body side of it looks kind of like a dumbbell, so it looks like this. And we can feed that through the square bit. And then you'll notice this nice plastic fitting, the square guy, will should fit into our square fitting on our housing and you hear that nice click you want that to be there so if yours doesn't do that and like look look how nice this holds in place that's what it should look like now we can hook it up to our throttle body all right so now we can take our throttle body and open it up like that and you can see that it's got two grooves one more or less in the middle and one at the very end we're going to aim for the middle one for right now we can change that later if we think it's going to be better best part about cars you can just change them later if you think something else will work better so the way you do this is you take this kind of dumbbell shape and you feed it in to that into that shape there and so that's what it looks like that's your finished result and then we can just let that slowly come down and just make sure that this doesn't come out of its home. It's really easy for that to happen. So you can pull on the other side of the throttle and you can kind of see how it's gonna work. This is the way it's going to work, except instead of me pulling on it, it's gonna be a pedal. So that looks pretty good. Okay, so as I pull on the throttle cable, you can see that it doesn't quite open full throttle. I can manually override it. We're almost there. So what I'm gonna do is push back on the bracket and then pull on the throttle cable again. 
Ah, see, now that's full throttle, so that's a decent starting point for a throttle adjustment. Okay, so I've already adjusted our throttle. You just take out the set screw right here. I think it's a two millimeter Allen, and you can just take it off of its home and put it right back on. It has these nice teeth to help you locate it, and I haven't put the set screw back because I don't know if it's 100% where I want it, but I am, I'm in the neighborhood. I have the rough approximation. And I'm up underneath the dash of our 55 Bel Air. Yours might look a little bit different on your LS Swamp, but I noticed that there was a hole here already for, gosh, who knows? And it kind of matches perfect with my uh, throttle mount here. Check that out, pretty cool. And it's, it's the throttle cable looks like it'll come in on a nice flat spot of the firewall. It's kind of what you want. It looks pretty nice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab my marker, line up on the firewall, get about as straight up and down as you like. Actually, I can take the pedal off because it's really easy. Get it about as straight up and down as you can. And we're just gonna mark that. So after we drill that out, we can kind of bolt this in where we want it, and then we can mark up our throttle cable hole because it's important to get that just right. All right, so I have our bracket here, and I already did a, a test fit of it, and it wasn't really clocked in the position I liked. So all I did was cut it along here with my bandsaw, opened it up, just tweaked this portion of it over and then just fill it in with weld. If you don't have a welder, it's okay. You can cut this open, get the clock exactly right. So that way it's nice and parallel with your brake pedal, not, you know, sort of underneath it. And then you can just take it to a welder and pay him a couple bucks to fill that up. It's really not a big deal. And most people that have a welder are more than happy to help you out. So what I'm gonna do is with this bracket in place, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just gonna put the top one in for right this moment because I want to get the mock-up just right before I start drilling holes. Snug that down just a little bit, not crazy. There we go. And so that's basically what it's going to look like when it's in its home. So then we can do the um, mock-up for it on the pivot and the hole for the throttle cable. So on this, I noticed the set screw for it is actually on the back side. There's really no way to get to it if it's all bolted together. That's why we're going to be, we're going to have to take it apart and stuff. And we can grab our, uh, this arm of the throttle and I've already attached a bit of metal I had laying around to retain the throttle cable. I think that is going to work really well for us. And there's a million different ways to do this. This is just the most efficient way I thought would work well. So we can put that back into where it's going to be. Kind of clock where we think it's gonna go. Put our throttle pedal on, see that's, that's totally wrong, but it will give us the height of where we want the hole. So once we have, basically at the end of my index finger, where we want our hole, we're just gonna go ahead and mark that with our gold marker, and we can take it all back apart and start making our hole for our throttle cable. Where you're looking now is where that golden mark is, and that's where we need to drill our hole. I have my really nice brand new step bit, and uh, we're gonna drill that out to about half inch, and then we're going to uh, kind of do a test fit, because you can always make a hole bigger, you can't really make it any smaller. All right, let's try it. There's one more. <laughs> yeah, it looks like you can just push it through. <laughs> yeah, my step bit made short work of this sheet metal, which is awesome. I believe that's a 9 16th size hole. Um, I will leave a link down below in the description of those awesome, awesome step bits. It really made this job a lot quicker so we can feed through our throttle cable. There we go. And then I'm just going to pull it like that until the ears are fully encapsulated in the sheet metal. 
And look, we can pull on it. And it doesn't go anywhere. So that's pretty darn good. Alrighty, I have my throttle assembly clocked and the way I want it to be. And this is going to differ for you a little bit. It's going to take some trial and error. I've put it on three or four times now getting the angle just right. You just want to make sure you have complete actuation of the throttle cable so you can get a full open throttle and make sure it's not like holding the throttle open slightly uh, when you let off the pedal, things like that. And you don't want it to hit anything else. But I think we are good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and put in my top bolt. Again, I have a helper on the uh, engine side holding that nut for me. This is the time to call in your favors from your neighbors, loved ones, those kinds of people. All right, now I can just snug those up. You don't have to be Hulk tight. Just make sure you got washers on everything. Just snug like that. That's really good. Ah, oh, there we go. Make sure it doesn't wobble around and jiggle on the firewall, and it doesn't, it's perfect. Now we can worry about putting the cable into our mount. So I already have my cable holding arrangement here bent open, and you can see it is uh, jam nutted, so this can't like fall off, but it still can rotate, which is important. So what we can do is grab our cable and feed it into that gap, that opening. Oh, that's really nice. That opening, we're just gonna bend back shut so it can't come off on us while we are driving. Oh yeah, check that out. That so we can see that plastic bit is actually sitting in its home, and then when we release it, and then we can do our final test of our throttle. We just want to make sure we can get full throttle without the pedal, you know, bottoming out or something like that. And you can adjust this endlessly. You can change what this looks like. That's kind of the art and the fun of it. But let's just double check for functionality. Yeah! Million bucks! I couldn't be happier. So we have the throttle pedal all situated inside. I've moved this bracket back slightly and tightened it down and we can see just the right amount of tautness on there. You don't want it like super tight, but you can't have this loose. This cannot be loose. It has to be just like this. Oh, that adjustment is just perfect. I really, really enjoy that. So if you have a problem with the length, you can adjust where this is. You can have about three or four inches of leeway there. And then of course, if you really had a problem, you could always go down. See, we were on the middle one, but our cable is a bit too long. So we went to the longer one and adjusted this backward. And now the fit is absolutely perfect. So now I can get in the driver's seat and push the throttle all the way down. You should see the throttle completely actuate if it doesn't go all the way back to where it's full throttle, you're gonna have a problem because your car's never gonna have full throttle and you're not gonna be able to enjoy it the way you want it to. So let's go ahead and check that and make sure we are spot on. I have a feeling we are. All right, all the way open, bottoms out. We have the full range here on the pedal. And that is perfect. So that is how to finish up your transmission, you know, putting on the cooler lines, putting on the drive shaft, uh, that gear we had to do, uh, also installing our throttle, pedal, and cable all in one nice, concise video. I really hope this series has helped you. If it has, please consider giving it a like. It really helps out the channel, and you can go that extra mile by subscribing down below. Again, it really helps out the channel. Let's thank our sponsor again, Summit Racing. They've been amazing. You guys have been awesome for watching. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.